in the previous video we have seen the basics of conductors and insulators and also the subatomic particles are responsible for the movement of a current in the atom or an atom electric circuit in which the power supply and a wire and may have an uh, any of one appliances like a lamp or maybe a resistor and followed by a switch if the switch is open the current will not flow into the circuit because the circuit is broken there won't be impossibility of continuous flow of an electron in the circuit whereas when you see the second diagram you may able to see that the positive sides are indicated by an proton that is red in color and the negative sides are indicated by the electron which is blue in color so this flow of electron constitutes an electric current but the direction of the electric current is always taken from positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal of the battery so the rate of flow of charge constitutes an electric current children before we proceeding into an chemical effects of an electric current the basic idea of ionization electrodes electrolyte all this to be known before we proceed to that ionization so ionization in the sense an atom which is neutral that doesn't have an uh, uh, like a charge like plus or minus it is considered to be a neutral okay when it become an positive or a negatively charged by either gaining or losing of one or more electron so please keep this in mind an atom when it loses or when it gains an electron from some other atom then the atom become charged so when it is charged we call them as an ion we call them as an ion so an atom that loses an electron okay when it loses a negative they become more positive they become more positive so such positively charged ion we call it as an cat ion whereas when the atom gains a negative charge from some other atom they become more negative so we call them as a negatively charged ion and ion we name it as an and ion so when the person or an atom when it loses an uh, negative they become a more positive so we call it as an cat ion whereas the person who accept those uh, negative they become more negative so we call them as an and ion so we need to learn about ionization children even in metals and non metals the compound formation happens between the positive ion and negative ion after one atom loses an uh, electron another atom gains an electron they forms a bond between them that result in a new compound so when certain compounds which dissolved in a uh, water so the atom turns into an cation and anion so the process of uh, converting an atom into an ions we call it as ionization example consider the salt that is available at our home that is nacl the table salt please dissolve it in a water so immediately the molecule that breaks the bond between sodium and chloride and it started forming an sodium ion and chloride ion so sodium ion is an na plus ion that is it is a positive ion whereas the chloride ion accepts an electron from the sodium and it is a negative ion we call it as an an ion so when such solution is allow we are allowing an electric current to pass through such solution what will happen there are many plus and minus in the uh, water solution of salt so when you pass in uh, current immediately this ions will start moving so positive ion get attracted towards a uh, negative side of the battery and the negative ions will attract towards the positive side of the battery so due to this motion of an ions that result in an electric current to flow if there is no such ions in the solution what will happen they cannot travel from one point to another point they need somebody to carry and go 
travel. So these ions are responsible for the movement of an electric current. Only before we are going to learn the new terms like electrolyte, electrode. So electrolyte, a compound whose atom ionize into a positive or a negative charge in the solution, we call them as an electrolyte. Now tell me, we took an NaCl and dissolved it in the water. So what happened to NaCl? The bond between them get uh, broken and immediately it forms Na plus and Cl minus ion. So the atom that has become an ions, we call them as an electrolyte. So there are different type of an electrolyte, strong and weak electrolyte, and also we are going to see some of the non-electrolytes. Okay, a strong electrolyte. A strong, it is a compound uh, that when dissolved in a water, what will happen? It completely ionize. For example, you're taking a uh, 5 gram of uh, uh, 5 ml of an uh, hydrochloric acid, that is HCl. You're dissolving in a water. So what will happen? All the HCl uh, molecules will be uh, dissolved in the water and similarly they all totally become ionized. They all totally become ionized. That means it has become an H plus cation and Cl minus anion. So these electrolyte are very good conductor of electricity because there are many number of uh, plus and minus ions were there uh, to allow the electricity to pass us through. So look at the table, the strong electrolytes like an acid, base and salts are a good uh, electrolyte in that they are, which one is very strong? Like HCl, H2SO4, HNO3 or the acid category and in the strong base NaOH, KOH, and in salt, sodium chloride, magnesium chloride, they are all considered to be a strong electrolyte. That means when you dissolve them in the water, they get completely ionized. So, and they will be a wonderful conductor of electricity. Right. It is a bit opposite of that. So, weak electrolyte, when you dissolve it in a water, they get partially ionized. That means if you see the diagram, you may able to see that, uh, for example, you are considering some acetic acid and dissolving in the water. Here, 50% or 40% of an acetic acid will become an ions, and rest of the acetic acid will remain as an molecule inside the water. So that means they are partially ionized. So you tell me children, like here 50% of ions are there, whereas in strong electrolyte we have 100% ion are there. So which one will be the good conductor? Obviously, where the ions are more, they, the electrical conductivity are very good. So strong electrolytes are very good conductor of electricity compared to an weak electrolyte. There are some cases that doesn't belong to a strong electrolyte or a weak electrolyte. We call them as a non-electrolyte. That means when you take those compounds like a non-electrolyte such as in glucose and alcohol, uh, if you uh, dissolve it in a water, they get dissolved. But the thing they do not form an ions. So there won't be an ions at all. You can see in this diagram, there is no ionization has been uh, happened. So in such case, uh, they are poor or they do not conduct an electricity. They do not collect, conduct an electricity. So this is a basic idea about what you mean by an ionization and also if it gets ionized, which one we call it as an cation and which part we call it as an anion. So positive is a cation and negative is an anion and electrolyte. So the compound that dissolves and ionizes, we call them as an electrolyte. In that, what is a strong electrolyte? What is a weak electrolyte? And which are the uh, maybe compounds that are considered to be a non-electrolyte. So these are the basics before we proceed to an chemical effects of an electric current.